वेलकम वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेकेंड पार्ट और द सेकेंड सेक्शन फॉर द पेपर वन जोग्राफी आई एस सोल्यूशन फॉर टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवेंटीन पेपर नाउ वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द पार्ट वन पार्ट वन वॉज मोर ऑफ कंटेम्प्रेरी टॉपिक्स दैट वर टस्ट हियर द क्वेश्चन वर मच मच मोर कन्वेंशनल एंड मच मोर डायरेक्ट मेनी ऑफ द क्वेश्चन वर डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द टेस्ट सीरीज सो इफ यू हैव गॉन थ्रू दैट क्लियरली द पेपर वॉज नॉट एट ऑल डिफिकल्ट नाउ द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वॉज आस्ट वॉज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ टाइम जोग्राफी नाउ दिस इज अ कॉमन अप्रोच दैट वॉज गिवन बाय हैगिड स्टैंड इन द आइडियाज ऑफ सोशल जोग्राफी ही टॉक्ड अबाउट अ टू डी स्पेस एंड ही टॉक्ड अबाउट द पाथ एंड द पाथ bundle so path is basically the sequence of activities that are done so for any development let's say talk about landform development landform evolution or any other phenomena you have the time space that you are talking about so how things have changed over the time on the space that we talk about and that's what we try to study under the time of, uh, under, under the concept of time geography so he talked about the path and he talked about path bundle and a path bundle he said that each individual part person or a individual path has a set of people who are coming together and each of these path has a kind of spread effect that is being talked about during the same time he talked about three constraints one is the capability the other is the coupling constraint and the next is the authority constraint when we try to include the recent happenings you must include the gis software geo time that talks about the time spatial visualization so all those things are very very important for this question the next question a very direct question on vital says classification that we have covered here the next question was a question on geographical systems again a very direct question being covered in this lesson this question is a kind of tri tricky question in terms of language so the traditional cultural identities are at loss with the growth of global connectivity so here what you have to explain is the idea of global connectivity you can explain it in various forms so you can start with a historical perspective say how things changed during the mughal advent in india so that's one way to start your answer the second way to start your answer is you can work around pre liberalization and post liberalization scenario so how things have changed how we are trying to preserve the traditional values so let's talk about the northeast region the northeast hub and then we talk about how the traditions the cultures of the tribal people are being maintained so those are some of the things and some of the ideas that you have to lay down here you have to talk about the impact of cultural homogenization so what would happen if there is a kind of cultural homogeneity so all those things should be discussed along with that you must include the ideas of diffusion that we have talked about separately in a class so diffusion is a very important concept when we talk about cultural development the next is sustainable development so sustainable development is basically a development in a way such that we are utilizing the need, the substance for today and we are able to meet the requirements of the future future generation as well so what we are doing is we are going for a development that's good for ourselves as well as for our future generations so this idea was propounded and first coined in the un conference on human environment at stockholm in 1972 and then you had our common future that was written and the three aspects that we talked about are economic ecological and social so under economic we talk about new markets new opportunities efficiency in production value addition under ecological approach we talk about reducing the waste we talk about human impact renewable raw materials and eliminating the toxic substances under social we talk about guarantee for each and every individual so resource allocation we talk about safety working conditions good community life and benefits to the advantage we have talked about the ideas of sustainable development um, under the earth summit in the following lecture so you can refer that the next is the contemporary paradigms in geography now this is a kind of uh, important topic that has been asked off and on so let's start with what is paradigm so paradigm is a prevailing pattern of thought that we talk about so under the kuhn's ideology we talked about evolution of a new paradigm that changes with time so we talk about the concept of uh, the set of concepts the set of categories the set of relationships and methods 
However, later on, McLaughlin uh, gave out four st uh, stages. So he talked about professionalism, crisis phase, revolutionary phase, and the pre-paradigm phase. And then you what basically need to explain is the various approaches under contemporary ideas. So you need to explain the quantitative approach, the locational analysis, the impact of GIS and remote sensing with the recent developments in the field of quantitative. You need to talk about welfare approach, radical approach, the ideas of Amrit is saying, the recent uh, Nobel Prize that was given in economics which talked about the behavioral patterns. So all those would be part of this answer. The next is intensity of energy crisis varies regionally. So this question talks about the differences or the imbalance in the demand and supply of the energy. So that's the very key aspect that you need to note about. Now once you have that idea in mind, you have to talk about the regional diversity in the uh, energy situations throughout the world. Then you can work around specific case studies. So you have to talk about let's say America, then let's say the continent of Asia, Africa. So you have to focus how renewable energy is coming up, bringing in more efficiency, bringing in change, bringing in access time allocation and uh, the concept of hybrid cars, energy cars and so on. However, you need to understand there has been a constant difference in the supply and the demand side. So there is a shortfall of energy for most of the nations which are not producing let's say oil or coal and for the other nations who are really looking for higher consumption. So the developing and the developed nation divide, the north-south divide would be part of this answer. The next is the cause and the consequences of forced migration of population. Now this question has been asked keeping in mind the Rohingyas crisis, the recent crisis that was in news. So you can put down that as, a, that as one of the case studies. Now the causes are predominantly war, trade, pilgrimage. Then you have famines, developments, natural calamities, natural hazards or any other human trafficking that exists. Now consequences as you know there would be instability, fiscal implications, there would be food crisis, radicalization, spread of diseases, there can be terrorist attacks in certain places or unrest and a public services faces a kind of special stress or burden. So there are evacuations that uh, uh, exist. A very recent you can give at Ma Mount Angong, uh, Agong in Bali. So that was again an idea of evacuating people or a kind of forced migration that was taking place. So all those affect the are basically the cause and consequences of forced migration. So we have talked about Rohingyas in one of the classes. So that could be one of the case studies that you can apply here. The next was a very direct question on crystallized central place theory and its applicability. So we have discussed it here. The next was uh, there has been uh, there are considerable demographic similarities between West European nations and Japan. Now this has been important question th because this was part of this year's net geography examination as well. So there has been a kind of decline in the uh, age experiment that has been seen with the aging population and a higher aging population that could be seen. So there has been a kind of change in the population structure of West Europe as well as Japan and that seems to be more or less similar with more of aging population that could be seen. Up. So you have later retirement age, more career opportunities, career till a later age, all those can be a way to reduce or mitigate the retiring population. So reducing the retiring population is one of the major focuses. The next is quality of life and the parameters for it. So quality of life talks about the general well-being of an individual. So it outlines the positive and the negative features of the life. Some of the important conditions that are taken into account are the income, income consumption, the main activity, the predominant activities, the health, education, leisure, economic activities, governance. However, we also talk about the PQLI, that's the Physical Quality of Life Index that was given by Morris Davis Morris in 1970s and he worked around three parameters, basic literacy, infant mortality and life expectancy. So under that you have the quality of life model where you have the input and the output. The output is basically the quality of life. Input is the various demographic, socio-economic factors and the culture. And you have the various perceptions at work. So it is family, friends, relatives, communities and spiritual aspects. The next is Heartland theory is gaining importance once again. So we have covered the Heartland theory in detail. So you can refer that. 
The next was the role of small towns in regional development. Now, small towns are considered as a future bearer of innovation because the capacity of the big towns is exhausting and now what we need to move around is the phenomena of counter urbanization. However, during the Tarab uh, Mina declaration in 2009, they said that small towns are gems of cultural heritage. So those are the things that you can quote about. I have been working around with students where they are constantly being saying that we need to include models for the answers in human geography. It's not at all necessary. But if so, you want to include, for example, in this question, you can explain how small towns form the lowest level or the lowest centers in the development of the Friedman and uh, Friedman's core periphery model. So those are the aspects that you can bring about. You can explain how decentralization approach has worked out, how top bottom approach has been working and the recent ideas of Niti Aayog in that respect. The last question is on social capital that was a part of the test series as well. So you have to explain the Putnam's idea of social capital. How you can measure the level of trust and cooperation, you uh, need to explain the access to the various measures or the parameters at macro and micro level. So you have to explain the social capital and the state performance, India's performance in respect to the prosperity index and how the situation or the ranking has been changed. The post-1947 period and the pre-1947 period, so the political changes that have come across. The areas in which we are performing poor, so basically the lack of social change, ideological differences, the type of family systems that exist and the major factors that affect us, the restricted employment opportunities, land acquisition, high rate of dropouts in the school and a lack of formal education system. So all uh, formal education and formal employment as well. So all those are the factors that affect the social capital. So those are the things you need to mention for this answer. So with this we cover uh, the paper 1 for geography optional 2017 solutions we will be covering the paper 2 in the upcoming classes so definitely subscribe and stay tuned have a very good day ahead.